Hello and welcome. Very interesting and extremely fascinating video today. Backtesting a trading strategy based on co-integration. Before we are getting started, you need to know what it means if two stocks are co-integrated. Also, you need to know how you identify two stocks being co-integrated. Good news for you, I've already covered that and I will link the video below. So be sure to check that out. Otherwise, it might be hard to follow along. Now, we are at the point where we identified two stocks which are co-integrated, namely Emmet and NXPI. These are two semiconductor stocks and those are co-integrated in terms of statistical properties. We have identified that in the video before. Now let's build a backtest around that. And to make it even more interesting, I will split this video in two parts. More digestible and also to keep the tension up. So first of all, we need stock prices for those two co-integrated stocks. So I'm just going to use YF's download function, pass the tickers, and we're going to start 2020. You can start your analysis from whenever you are interested in. I'm just starting roughly five years back here. So with that, we get a data frame like this containing prices for Emmet and NXPI. Now, what do we need to do to backtest a co-integration strategy? First of all, we need to know the parameters for the strategy based on co-integration. And those parameters are just alpha and beta, which are coming off a OLS regression as explained in the video before. Now, the difference to the video before is we need rolling regression parameters. Why? Because we want to know every day what the last N days look like in terms of parameters. So you need a rolling regression, which you're running every day based on a certain look back. Now, the look back window, you have to pick. I'm just taking one year back here. So I'm defining the look back window, just calling that rolling window as 252 days. So this is just representing one year. So one year has roughly 252 trading days. So this is my look back or rolling window. Now I'm also defining stock one and stock two, just to make things easier. And I'm assigning that to tickers. So stock one is simply Emmet and stock two is NXPI. Now, as we have, or we wanna have a list containing those rolling parameters, so a rolling alpha and a rolling beta, we need to initialize a list. And the first 252 rows will be NAN values because this is our look back window where we roll over. So our first 251 rows will be empty because the first value out of the regression will be at the 252nd row. All right, so what I'm just doing is I'm just initiating a rolling alpha by taking a NumPy and N value as a list and I'm multiplying that with my rolling window. So with that, I'm just getting 252 entries of NAN values. Same story for the beta. So with that, I'm just getting the first 252 values as NAN values. As I know, those have to be NAN values. And it's easier to bring them together with the regression results afterwards. So how does that look like? Super simple, just a list full of NAN values for those two uh, parameters. Now, next, we need a rolling beta and alpha using the past data. So you can do a lot of things. I'm just doing a simple for iron range loop here, starting at the rolling window. So starting at row 252 until the end of that data frame. So just the length of the data frame, which is one 1.312 uh, rows here. It's an interesting number. It's not designed by 
uh, intuition, by the way. Uh, okay, anyhow, so it goes until the end of the data frame. So we're just starting at row 252 and going until the end of the data frame. And then we just take a split of the data or a slice of the data, just calling that pass data, which is just uh, I minus the rolling window until I. So with that, I'm just getting chunks of the past data with a 252 window. So I'm just going to show you how that looks like uh, for, let's say, uh, row 500. So you just go until row 500 minus 252 until 500. So this is how this part is looking like. So you end up with this so you always get a chunk of 252 rows and then you just go row by row through this data frame here right so if you take that for 499 499 you end up a day before and so on right i think you get the point so you just get chunks of the data with 252 uh, past days here and then you calculate your regression here so past data so your your x variable is past data then screen for stock one and then just the values to get a numpy array and same for the y so just can copy paste here it's the same story for stock two here and then you just run an ols regression so for using stats models you need to add a constant for that so add constant for x and then you just fit the model to this data. So this is this might look uh, complicated, but this is actually super simple. So you just create a regression for the last 252 days for every single row starting at row 252. So you have your model fitted and then you can just append the uh, regression parameters meaning rolling alpha and rolling beta to this rolling alpha and rolling beta list here. So rolling alpha append which is already a list and then your model parameter so just the intercept of that regression and same story for the rolling beta you append the slope here. So running this Again, you're just filling the rolling alpha and rolling beta list. So let's bring that all together in a lucid parameter data frame. So we have it organized somewhere nicely. So rolling, rolling alpha is the column name here. And there just store the rolling alpha and then rolling beta, same in a different color here. And the index is just the data frame index. So with that, this is a very nice way to bring the data frame and the uh, regression parameters together. This won't be possible if you um, not initiate the NAN values for the first rows as then the shape would be different. So I messed up at some point here. So rolling, I uh, closed the the parentheses wrongly here. So this is looking like this. We have rolling alpha. And actually I did a mistake here, sorry for that. So with that, we're getting a rolling alpha and a rolling beta. So you see here, we have the alpha values here and the beta values here. So for every single day, so on this day, how can you read that? For the last year, so 252, days you would get an alpha of this 77 point something and a beta of this then you take one day more into account of future data and one less of past data but still 252 days you're getting a rolling alpha of this one and a beta of this one so you just have a regression results for every single day with a look back of 252 uh, trading 
days. Now, this is already quite nice, but now we need to compute the spread using this rolling alpha and beta. So spread is, as explained in the previous video, you just have your uh, stock two minus and then sim similar calculation. You take the rolling params data frame here, take the alpha plus the beta plus the rolling beta times the price of stock one here, df stock one. So with that, you get a spread based on those rolling calculations. So this is looking like this. So you have a spread for every single day here. And this spread is the basic for your trading strategy, right? So you want to have a parameter where you base your trading strategy on. And a very common parameter for that is to just use the Z score. So the Z score is simply the spread minus the mean of the spread divided by the standard deviation of the spread. So you have a, a, a value which doesn't have any scale. So which is just a value going from a certain number until a certain number without having any scale. So you can check, is that higher than, for instance, one? And then you know, okay, I'm going long or short on the strategy, dependent on what you wanna wanna do. So in that case, if the Z score, Z score, sorry, is highly negative, you usually would go long. If the Z score is positive, you usually would go short, all right? So to calculate the Z score, that's actually super simple. You just calculate the rolling mean spread by just taking the spread and rolling with the same look back over, take the mean. And you also need the rolling standard deviation, rolling STD, which is just the standard deviation applied. And then you have the Z score, which is a nice metric to check if that is above a certain threshold here. So rolling mean here in relation to the rolling standard deviation. So this is looking like this. And now this value or these values we also store in a data frame. Same story as before, doing some column namings here. So spread is the spread to values then you have the rolling mean, that is the rolling mean. Then you have the rolling standard deviation, that is the rolling standard deviation and the Z score. That is the Z score. And then again, the index as DF index and then actually this time set the parentheses properly. And then you have spread data here, which is a super interesting, and super informative data frame because with this, you can design your strategy. So if you, for instance, just plot that, you will already see something very interesting. And let's say what I just said, you structure a trading strategy where the Z score is going quite negative. So you see you have the zero line here and then the Z score is something negative here. Then you go long and you see here you go long and then uh, you would have made a certain profit in the best case. All right. But this is going to be the next video. So we'll use these metrics to design a trading strategy to actually check if that would make sense to trade. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming video. Cheers, bye bye.